Transgender people are at much higher risk of being killed than any other group across the board. We're traveling to New South Wales to look at how the so-called gay panic defense worked in 2023 to reduce a killer's culpability for a transgender woman's murder. Hector Enrique Valencia Valencia was a former Colombian Army serviceman and a student at the Surrey Hills College. He arrived in Australia on a student visa in May 2019. He would admit to a court that he assaulted and killed Kimberly McRae in January 2020, but he would say it's not murder. When McRae was discovered, there was a broken lamp with a broken power cord near her body. Her twin sister had contacted the real estate agent for the apartment asking for a welfare check on McRae when she had not heard from her. Property manager, Corrine Smith, found McRae covered in a blanket. She was clothed, but her shirt was pulled down, exposing her breasts. McRae was already decomposing when she was found. McRae was a transgender woman who advertised her sexual services online as a 38-year-old woman. Valencia answered McRae's online advertisement and went to McRae's Mount Street apartment. Inside, McRae performed a series of sex acts on Valencia. Valencia would say he did not know that McRae was transgender and that when he found out, he lost self-control. He was also unaware he would say that McRae was 69 years old. He said that about five to 10 minutes into the sex acts, he became suspicious of McRae's gender. He said it was against his religious beliefs that, quote, I had sexual intimacy with another man, end quote, and that led him to feel upset and enraged, as he put it. He would say that he punched McCray once in the stomach and once in the face before they wrestled and struggled on the floor. He would say after he punched her, she attacked him with the lamp and he started to fear for his life. He said that he was naked and McCray was between him and the door. He would say that he wanted to leave, but he couldn't, and he choked McCray to death. He then took three iPhones that belonged to McCray and submerged those in McCray's toilet to hide, or try to hide anyway, the messages that they had exchanged before the killing. After he killed McCray in her eastern suburb unit in Sydney, Australia, he fled the country. He sent a number of Facebook messages to a friend, which translated from Spanish read, quote, you are one of the few I can trust. And the truth is tomorrow I am traveling to Colombia. I threw my life away, dude. I am escaping because I don't want to finish in jail in Australia. I die of shame to tell this to anybody. I believe I kill a slur for a sex worker. I better go Columbia before they catch me. I cannot see her in the news. I don't know if she is dead, but she must be after what happened." End quote. He sold his motorcycle for $2,000 and borrowed another thousand from friends and bought a ticket on his landlord's stolen credit card back to Columbia. He boarded his flight three days after the murder. He was arrested in Aruba and extradited back to Australia for trial where he remained in custody since. He entered a guilty plea to manslaughter and held that he didn't intend to kill McRae or cause her grievous bodily harm, and so entered a not guilty plea to murder. The judge hearing the trial found him not guilty of murder, as she did not believe he intended to seriously injure her. Valencia was sentenced on July 7, 2023, to 10 years in prison with parole eligibility after six years, nine months. In this case, the judge did not frame this as gay panic, even though Valencia's aggression began with him being upset about having intimacy with a transgender woman. She would say it should, should be clearly understood that Kimberly McRae was entitled to live her life as she wanted, but she framed it as the prosecutor not proving Valencia's intent in his aggression as an intention to kill or seriously hurt McRae. What Valencia described in his testimony was so-called gay panic. Defenders of the judge's finding who say this was not a gay panic case clearly and sometimes deliberately overlook what started the aggression. Opponents of the judge's finding say that this was a case 
where gay panic operated to allow a murderer to walk with only an involuntary manslaughter conviction. There is a mental element to murder, and in Australia, under the Crimes Act, there has to be an intent to inflict grievous bodily harm, an intent to kill, or reckless indifference to human life. Choking someone with a lamp cord when you are the initial aggressor and the victim only hit you with the lamp to defend yourself is at least reckless indifference to human life and goes well beyond self-defense. Does it matter that someone can have their cartilage break with only a few pounds of pressure or that a person can be rendered unconscious after only seconds? No. The act of compressing a person's throat is reckless in that it is reasonably foreseeable that the person could die. Although the judge in this case framed her decision around the mental element of murder, let's have a look at how these panic defenses have worked in the past. Gay panic and trans panic are not standalone defenses in Canada, the United States, the United Kingdom, or Australia. They are used as part of a different allowable defenses like uh, provocation, self-defense, and insanity defenses like irresistible impulse or diminished responsibility. The defenses are usually used to seek an outright acquittal, a mitigated or lower sentence, or a mitigated or lower conviction, as here to a lesser offense. In Australia, Camp Lore says, although the homosexual advanced defense cannot be found anywhere in legislation, its entrenchment in case law gives it the force of law. Several Australian states and territories have either abolished the umbrella defense of provocation entirely or excluded nonviolent homosexual advances from its ambit. In the United States, bills that would prohibit these defenses at the federal level died in 2018 and 2020 and were reintroduced in 2021. 16 of the 50 states have abolished the, the defenses. In Canada, its use is limited, though the provocation defense still exists. As with Australia, the defenses are mostly entrenched in case law where primarily men commit such violent offenses. Thank you for listening.